Good morning. Praise God. It is so good to be in the house today. Hallelujah. Good things are happening. It is spring. Spring has sprung. The flowers are out. Uh, people are out this morning. My uh, daughter came uh, uh, to the to the master bedroom and outside the door she says, I'm going out this morning. And so she was going out to take some pictures of the beautiful flower blossoms at 5.30 in the morning. Woohoo! <laughs> but praise God, it's great. For those of you who scheduled trips to Japan to be here during the Hanami season, sorry, we were a few weeks late. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you have to schedule stuff for, um, for weather. Um, so it's, it's a difficult one. So, um, but we are so glad. It is spring and it's great to be alive. God is so awesome. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And welcome to everyone who's joining us. Thank you. I've been encouraged. Heard uh, from uh, someone joining us from Colorado. I guess there's people joining us from uh, Philippines. There's people joining us from all over the place. So we just welcome you today. Welcome to Victory Word Church. We wish you could be here in person. We're here at 930. We're here at uh, 11 a.m. And we are here just celebrating Jesus in both Japanese and English. So, uh, and as they say a lot, it seems like you have to say, and please like and subscribe. So when you see our messages on the, war, uh, on the net, please like it, and let's get the algorithms, algorithms to put it at, at the top. And then if you have a comment, put in a nice comment, something positive, because basically we want to get the word of the Lord to as many people as possible. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we just dedicate this time to you, Lord. We pray that you would be glorified as we open the word together. Lord, we pray that your name would be lifted up. Lord, we pray that you would be known. And Lord, we are not here to make ourselves known. We're here to make you known. Lord, we thank you. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. We dedicate this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. So I want to talk about something that's really important. I have a saying that, um, that came to me one time, and it's called run with the champions. And the first part of the saying is, if you want to be a champion, you have to run with the champions. So if I want to be a winner, I got to run with the winners. If I run with people that will pull me down, then I will not be a winner. I will be um, destitute. I will be poor. I will be in prison. I will be in trouble be because... I'm running with the wrong people. God wants you to run with the champions. And part of running with the champions is running with believers because believers are champions and they should be. So today I want to talk about the power of godly relationships. The power of godly relationships. And so when we say godly, that means righteous. That means good relationship. You know, relationships should build you up, not pull you down. If you got married and your spouse is always beating you up, always ripping you apart, then you're in a bad marriage. And so you need a miracle. The good news is that God can turn that miracle, that marriage, into a miracle marriage. You know, God is so good. He's so awesome. As um, this, this morning we celebrate the birthday of our granddaughter. We're so excited that she's a year old today. But her mother is a miracle because... Um, my daughter, we weren't supposed to be able to have. But because God is the God of miracles, we had a baby. And how did we know we could have a baby? By fellowshipping with people who knew the Word of God and uh, to uh, revealed to us that the Word of God is not just Word. It's power. It's power. Last night we went to a Pakistani restaurant, and as we walked in, it was very awkward. And I, I, I dropped off. Um, I went there with uh, my two daughters and my wife. And uh, we went in. Um, I, I was parking the car. They went in. And they were, had the, they, had the, they were on the floor doing some religious prayer stuff. And they're facing Mecca or whatever, which used to be Petra. But not you know, anyway, different story. Um, but so and it was very awkward. You know, relationships shouldn't be awkward. Relationships should be normal. They should be good. And when you're dealing with God, you can just talk to God. It's talking to God is something that you should do 24 hours a day. It's not something that you have to demonstrate to everyone else. Uh, through some type of religious activity. You know, in Japan, we have people, they go up to the, to the shrine and they clap their hands twice to get the God's attention or, you know, the shrine 
uh, attention. And there's demon be demons behind these shrines, so we have to be really careful. Because if you're praying to um, these demons, if you're praying to these so-called gods, you're messing with the wrong stuff. You know, you're bringing, uh, you're bringing uh, God's jealousy against you. You're bringing, uh, God, God doesn't want that. You should honor the Lord God Almighty and Him only. Amen. So, how do we build ourselves up? We build ourselves up through godly relationships. If you look at um, Hebrews 10.25, this is something that took us through Wooflu. This is the thing that took us through the COVID stuff because... Um, I'm th very thankful for some of you who were with us every day, every Sunday, despite everyone else closing. We stayed open. There was one Sunday where we're like, what do we do? But I don't even know. Did we take that day off? I don't remember. Um, but we didn't take much. Uh, we, you know, other churches, they took day time off, and then they never reopened. But why is that? Well, the reason why we didn't take time off is because of Hebrews 10.25. Hebrews 10.25 says... Not forsaking, uh, sorry, let me go here. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What's the day that's approaching that it's talking about here? We are talking about Jesus is coming back, and we will meet him in the sky. Jesus is coming back soon, and it's not time to sleep. It's not time to get bored. It's not time to get distracted. Remember, the enemy wants to distract with the three Ds. What are the three Ds that the enemy has to, to, to derail your, your spiritual life? Well, the three Ds are deception, distortion, and um, deception, <laughs> distortion, and uh, distraction. So these are the three Ds the enemy uses to de um, derail you. God does not want you to be derailed. So the important part of being online with God is fellowshipping. In fact, the Greek word for church is, can I say it right? Ekklesion. Ekklesion. Uh, Ekklesio, I guess. Here we go. And what does it mean? It means a called out group. So a church, ecclesia, is a called out group. The Bible talks about Christians are encouraged to meet together. So we're encouraged to meet together and to grow. And in fact, it talks about meeting with our elders. Who, is, who are our elders? Our elders are people who are someone who's walked before us, someone who's already struggled with the marriage struggles, someone who's already fought the good fight of faith, somebody who's already fought the financial battles, someone who's already dealt with the world and its less lusts. We're going to talk about that at 11 today. Um, but someone, an elder is someone who's walked the walk. They, they, they've lived the life. And so when we're going to church, the, the people of the church should be encouraging each other. My father was in his 80s, and I was encouraging him to, um, during the uh, Wu Flu stuff, I was encouraging him, him to uh, get to church, but it was really hard because he was in a very leftist state. The, the state that he was living in was very locked down. You can't go out. Uh, it was really a horrible time. And so what happened was he stopped going to church. And when you stop going to church, you go from a living plant to a shriveled, uh, dried out shell. God doesn't want you to be shriveled and dried out. Dried out. God wants to be you to be alive. He wants you to be a called out group. The church is a called out group. We're called out. We're called to serve him. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We're here to do things for God. And, and how do we do things for God? We learn from each other. We learn from each other. We we encourage each other not no one is above anyone else you know we may have pastors we may have youth leaders we may have worship leaders but it that doesn't mean that any of them any of us is above the the members of the church every single one of us needs to go after god with all we got i'm amazed recently of the people that don't attend attend church regularly we've got people that come to church and every time the church is open they are here there's no excuse 
for not being at church. They never have an excuse. They're always at church. And if something comes up, it, they schedule around, the ch uh, around church. Why? Because church is fellowship. We are not to forsake the gathering together. You and I are to be in church every Sunday. And I'm here every Sunday, um, you know, and I'm here preparing every week uh, because I want to honor God. This is my, my offering to the Lord is my studies throughout the week. My offering to the Lord is encouraging you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to grow. And so, so, so we are to grow. We're to, to fellowship. And so fellowship brings strength. Champions are born from champions. James 5.16. James 5.16. This is part of the reason why we get together. And it says here specifically, James 5.16 says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So what are we supposed to do at church? We're supposed to talk about our sins and we're supposed to say, I messed up. Please pray with me so that I can overcome this bad habit. Please pray with me so I can stop talking like this or stop looking at that or stop listening to that. Because what you allow into the entrances of you, your body uh, is what will develop it. You, you're exposing your spirit to. And like an old film camera, whatever you expose your spirit to, uh, to will develop there. So, And this is developing in your soul area. So don't expose your soul. Really, what you're exposing is your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Remember, you're a three-part being. You're a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. And your soul area is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Don't expose your soul to junk. What you see, what you hear, what you taste, these are the interests to your heart. Don't expose yourself to junk. L protect your heart. In fact, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 talks about protect your heart with all diligence. For out of it, in verse 22, it says, flow the issues of life. So we are to confess our, uh, James 5, 16 again says, confess your trespasses one to another. So it's okay to tell people that you messed up. But if you've been told by someone and been, someone's confided in you, that doesn't mean you go tell someone else. Because if you start going tell, telling other people, what you're doing is you are sowing bad seed. And when you tell somebody something, that's going to go somewhere else. Recently, I was dealing with a family member, and I, and, the, um, and I had told that person something that wasn't supposed to be repeated. It wasn't like top secret or anything, but then I heard that it got out. And then I thought, well, I can't trust that person, so I won't say anything. Or I won't confide in them anymore. So if you, someone confides in you and says, please pray with me, don't tell other people. The good news about God is he never displays your dirty laundry. He never tells the world that you messed up. But God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, who lives on the earth with us and in us today, will convict your heart. So if the Lord convicts your heart, pray with somebody, confess your sins, one another, pray, and then, and then the interesting point about it is that you may be healed, it says in James 5.16. So what blocks healing? Well, it's, maybe it's not God's will that I get healed. No, 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 no. It says here that if you don't confess your sins, you may not be healed may not be healed. You may be healed, but you may not be healed. So if you've got sin in your life and you're trying to get healing for something, the first thing that you need to do is get rid of the sin. Sin is a blessing blocker. Sin will block you from receiving what God has for you. And so that's what the fellowship, the koinonia, the Greek word is, the fellowship being together, it's all about being, we're called out together. And so when we see sin in our life, we call it out and we say, nope, I'm not going to do that anymore. Nope, I'm not going to do that anymore. You can have uh, kind of twisted thinking. And in fact, when I was in high school, I was a very good wrestler. Why was I a good wrestler? Well, actually, because when my, I was five years old, my father, who was a state champion, got the three boys in my family into wrestling. 
And we, I hated wrestling when I was a little kid because I remember um, them putting me up on the pull-up bar in the high school, and I'm a little kid, you know, five, six years old, and that pull-up bar, it was like, it seemed like it was, you know, five meters to fall down from the pull-up bar. You know, these days, of course, I'm doing pull-ups all the time, and it's nothing. You just jump up and grab it, but when you're a little kid, and so, you know, they put you on the pull-up bar to do pull-ups and to do, you know, become a wrestler. You know, and so I remember in high school, though, you know, I was a Christian and I, and I got saved in uh, the, uh, you know, 100 years ago in, the, in 1978. But I, I got saved. And in high school, I remember um, I was a very good wrestler because my father had put me in to wrestling when I was a kid. It was just natural for me. It was just very easy for me. So it was, um, you know, physical, physical sports. So wrestling became judo, and judo became Japan, and Japan became a Japanese wife. Wow, watch out. Anyway, so, um, but I remember I didn't like wrestling that much when I was a kid, but when I got into high school, it was just second nature. It was so easy. But there were times when I had this Dark Ages mentality. I haven't talked about this for a long time, but Dark Ages mentality is the um, three things. You think that whatever happens to you is God's will. You think that poverty is next to godliness. And you think that sickness comes from God. This is Dark Ages mentality. And this is all a lie. It's wrong. And so my misthinking was when I screwed up and I did something that I felt like didn't honor God, I felt like I got out of God's will and that I needed to lose wrestling matches. And I had a weird, I don't know where I got this thinking, but it's, it's when you think religious, you think weird. God is all about relationships, and God is, is about thinking, uh, thinking about he, the relationship with him. And religion is weird. R uh, relationship with God, being a Jesus person, is not weird. It's, it's, and, and you've met weird people, and, and it's not because God is weird. It's because they're weird. And so, so I had to get my mind renewed, and I discovered when I got married that God's will for me wasn't for me to fail. God's will for me was to succeed. Amen. So we have to surround ourselves with godly counsel. It says in Proverbs eleven fourteen that we're support, supposed to surround ourselves with godly counsel. It says in Proverbs thirteen twenty that we're to surround ourselves with godly counsel. And then finally, could you bring up First Corinthians fifteen thirty three? What does that say? So the, the Word of God is the champion's book. Hallelujah. It's the champion's book. I think there's some church in America called, America called Champions Church or Chapel or Champions Center or something like that. What a great name. It doesn't say Christ in the name, but when you know Jesus, you know the champion. Hallelujah. There's a famous singer called Carmen, and he had a, uh, a song called The Champion, and it was talking about how Jesus won our, our victory for us. So what's 1 Corinthians 15.33 say? It says, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good habits. What is this saying? Are you, it's saying that, so it's maybe you were a homosexual and you got saved. And, some, and I've heard about homosexual, ex-homosexuals getting saved and then going back to the homosexual bars or whatever and trying to win people for Jesus and then getting pulled back into the sin. Why is that? Well, because there's a weakness there and you need to build yourself up and you need to block off the whatever it is that you've dealt with. You need to block it off and become strong in the Lord and the power of his might. If you surround yourself with champions, you will be a champion. But evil corrupts. So if you surround yourself with evil, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And 1 Corinthians 15.33 makes that very, very clear. Hallelujah. But recently, my daughter's talk, been talking about 2 Corinthians 6.14, and it talks about relationships as well. 2 Corinthians 6.14, it talks about, um, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? What is this saying here? Don't connect yourself with unbelievers don't be spending all of your time with unbelievers we come to church every week not because we're lonely we come to church because we need to build up our soul we need to build up our soul as you build up your soul your spirit becomes strong faith 
Romans 10:17 says, "Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." In our Tokyo Bible studies, we've been talking about you know listening to music in the car. Yeah, you can do that. But if you listen to music in the car, it doesn't really edify you. It doesn't really build you up. But when you listen to preaching, when you listen to like this message later, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ha. Anyway, when you listen to this message later, when you listen to other great spirit-filled Bible-believing preachers sharing the word of God, you will be built up. You become strong in the Lord and the power of his might. God is so awesome. God is so good. God wants you and I to become strong. But if we're not spending time with him, we'll never be strong. So how do we get ourselves going? Well, the first thing that you do in your relationship with God is you commit to him. Then secondly, you fellowship with other believers and you fellowship with him. Get yourself around champions. Praise God. And finally, as we look at Proverbs 27, 17, Proverbs 27, 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the count, uh, countenance of his friend. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. The countenance, the, the, the face. When you see someone is, that is a champion, you can see confidence in their face. When you see someone that knows God, you see that they know where they're going and they know that, nope, not going to do that. Not going to do that. Going to focus on this. Yesterday I was uh, kind of reviewing, you know, when Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany and he took uh, Germany to the very dark side in, in Nazi Germany. The, one of the first things that happens before he came to power was in, in Munich there was something, it was like called the Beer Hall Push. And, and it, what it was was a rebellion. Uh, where he went and he gave a speech and the Nazis were dressed up with their, you know, their paraphernalia and they were beginning to, uh, to rise up and to beginning to, they were, they're filled with hate. They are filled with hate. And, and, but they went out and some people got shot. Some people got killed. I think it was 14 people that got killed in Munich, Germany. And, and then, and that became like the beginning of um, the, f uh, the fascism that, that took over that nation. And, but, you know, but what was that? It was bad company. It was bad company. And when you look at these people and when you read the history about the Nazi leaders, you see that these people were not good. There was a man by the name of Martin Bormann, and he was the closest, you know, to, to Hitler. And, and he was at the end, uh, towards the end of their, their reign of terror, <laughs> towards the end of it, he was filtering everything and he wouldn't let certain people get in because he wanted to control. He wanted to keep power. See, it was a bunch of uh, men and women that were controlled by demons that were in control. And this is the same thing that you and I are dealing with in this world. We're living in a very corrupt world. I don't know of a, a single nation that has a very, um, there must be something out there, but most nations have corrupt governments. Most nations have corrupt people in power. And all they do is they want to do stuff for money. And they don't care about anything, even if it takes their, their future away. The, they all only care about the short term. They don't think in the long term. But when you know God and when you have a relationship with God, you realize what you do today effect, affects who you are tomorrow and what you can do tomorrow. So if you want to know God more, then you have to go after him. And if you want to know, if you want to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, then you need to surround yourself with godly people, with godly relationships. Finally, I just want to share, you know, one of the life-changing experiences for me was back in the 90s. Back in 1995, there, there was a revival called the Brownsville Revival. And this revival started because a, a, peop, a bunch of people in church in a Sunday night service, they met on Sunday night and they had a prayer time. The, the evangel, visiting evangelist started preaching the word of God. People got saved. He called people to come forward to, to seek the Lord at the altar, at the, at the front of the church. So people came up and started calling on the name of the Lord. And that 
call became so strong that they decided to have a service again the next day on Monday and then the next day on Tuesday. And they did this. They had a service every night for five years. It eventually, um, um, it spread all over the world. And in fact, we had 20 pastors from Japan go and most of them experienced revival in their church. Why? Because they experienced the power of God. God wants you to experience His power, but in order to experience His power, you need to be in His presence. And in order to get into your pres- to into, into God's presence, all you have to do is get to church. Get into fellowship. Do not forsake the gathering together because the Lord is coming soon. He's coming soon, but will you be ready? Will you be ready? God loves us. He desires that that love that you know of the Lord comes to Him and goes to others. Because the Bible says, in God's presence is fullness of joy. When you know God, it's a joy that is indescribable. People say, why are you so happy? I'll never forget walking in Kanda, Tokyo, and my friend saying, you know, why are you so happy? And I said, Jesus And this friend, I shared Jesus with him. He didn't accept Jesus at the time, but you know what? I planted a seed. I I told him, hey, dude, you need Jesus. A Japanese friend, you know, and he's a big karate guy, you know, um, you know, very confident in himself. But you know what? When you put, when your faith is in yourself, it's a dead end. When your faith is in the Lord, you can have joy that is inexpressible, undescribable, joy that will change change your situation change your challenges and and put the things that are putting you down it puts you up and above and over them so as you go out today remember god loves you and god has a plan for you and remember also that godly relationships have power So don't surround yourself with people that don't know Him. Surround yourself with godly people that know Him. And just like we said at the very beginning today, um, the fellowship, the church is a called out group. God is calling us out of the world and into His light. And your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to call others out of the darkness and into the light. God is awesome. Let's pray. I'm going to pray for you. Father God, I pray for every single person within the sound of my voice. Father God, I pray that you would convict their hearts. Father God, convict my heart. Help us to go after you with all that we got. Father, help us to look at our relationships, to audit the relationships that we have this day And those relationships that distract us and take us away from you, Lord, help us to jettison those relationships. But those relationships that help us to draw near to you, that help us to grow up, that mentor us in the faith, Lord, help us to develop those relationships even more. And Father God, I pray for every single person here today. I pray that you would give them a spiritual brother or sister, someone in the faith that they can talk to that will encourage them. Someone in the faith that knows the word, that's lived the life. Someone that can encourage them to do uh, and make right choices. Lord, I thank you and I praise you that as we pray, stuff happens. And Father God, when those people come across our lives, we will remember that we prayed this Sunday. We prayed this day for godly relationships. Lord, I thank you for wisdom for each and every person here today and years and months and days after this message. Lord, I thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just remember, as you surround yourself with godly people, something good is going to happen to you today, and what you do today affects your tomorrow. Praise God. Have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.